Which is the most overpowered fictional character? Gotta be the mosquito from One Punch Man. Not even the guy who kills everything with one punch could kill it edit. Wow I just woke up and saw that this exploded thanks for the gold. The best summation of Saitama's power I've ever seen was in the comments on, Saitama's not even in the Goku, Superman category, he's in the Roger Rabbit category. He's however strong he has to be for it to be funny when the bad guy dies. So yeah, a common household mosquito will always be stronger than One Punch Man because that's way funnier. He's always infinitely powerful. That's why the only fight he has ever enjoyed is the one in his dream against the subterraneans, because it was testing his power. I think a big point of the show is to depict how boring life would be with ultimate power. Those stick men in those stick figure flash animations. I think Dumbass is the strongest. Outsmarted the pro by having the C4 on his own head. Yeah, he's strong. Dr. Manhattan. This has to be it. His power is literally manipulation of matter at will. Can't really do much better than that. His only weakness was his growing apathy amidst realizing how insignificant life really was. I am pretty sure he isn't even a physical being. What people refer to as Dr. Manhattan is just the particles he assembled to personify him. That's why he could just reassemble it after being destroyed. He doesn't even exist in a physical form and can't be killed. Edit. Lot of people are mentioning the HBO show, but it sounds like they severely nerfed his powers in it. This is a dude with reality warping powers. The blind idiot god of the Cthulhu mythos. Azathoth is the slumbering nucleic chaos whose dreaming created reality. Should Azathoth awaken for even a moment reality would cease to be and cease to have ever been. Op said fictional. WHAA. Q from Star Trek. Ah, except other Q in the continuum can hurt or disable other Q, who may or may not be individuals since their intelligence and mere existence is far beyond anything our simple mortal brains can comprehend. Read that last part in John Delancey's voice. SpongeBob. He can rip off his arms and eat them for sustenance. He survived numerous explosions and a nuclear blast. He can blow bubbles that will attack you. He can draw himself and bring it to life. He literally went on a quest that Neptune wasn't willing to go on, and he remains happy and jubilant while working a minimum wage job as a fry cook for a greedy crab that only cares about money. SpongeBob is a god. He can also filter feed and reproduce by budding. Kirby. This comment is hidden, but we both know how insanely overpowered he is. Canonically he is an old one, a god basically. I would like to know more about Kirby's lore. Gibby from iCarly. The real reason Thanos needed the stones was to stand a chance against Gibby. Pretty much any character with meta powers like narrative shaping. For example, Feather and Augustus Aurora from the When They Cry series of video games. This chick once got attacked by another character who was thousands of years old, capable of killing anyone with 100% certainty rate thanks to a specific magical power. Create and destroy universes with a flick of her wrists and pretty much any overpowered thing you can think of. What did Feather and do? She hit pause on the story, not time, the story, and summoned the script and wrote into the script that she beat and killed the other character. She didn't even bother including how she did it. She just non nonchalantly said she would fill those details in later. And as soon as she allowed the narrative to continue, the other character crumpled into a broken heap and died without even seeing what hit her. Feather and Augustus Aurora vs the Animaniacs Who Wins Top 10 Anime Battles of All Time Toss up between Q and Mixia's Fitlick. There's a reason why those two are written as tricksters. They were written as true villains. No way would any of the heroes survive. Mixia's Fitlick actually becomes a villain in Whatever Happened to the Man of Tomorrow because he got bored with playing pranks. Considering that there are literally omnipotent fictional characters out there who obviously all tie if we are simply measuring flat power level. I will instead define overpowered as a vastly higher strength compared to the rest of the characters in their world in which case, a few examples that spring to mind in no particular order. 1. Saitama from One Punch Man. The strongest other character in the series fires a star destroying laser, and Saitama still easily cancelled it out with a punch while holding back. Also everyone else in the series generally caps out at city busting. 2. 
Dr. Manhattan from Watchmen, everyone else in his world are just slightly higher than Olympic tier athletes, but Dr. Manhattan can simply wave his hand and create a city out of nothing, disintegrate people into component atoms, teleport between planets, reform his body after it's been reduced to nothing but atoms, see the future, stuff like that. Mori Jin from God of High School, the anime's only just coming out this year so stop now if you care about spoilers for that. Mori Jin, at least at his peak during the Ragnarok arc, becomes capable of crossing the distances between solar systems in the time it takes for another, superhumanly fast guy to swing a sword, and kicking with enough force to destroy over 300 quadrillion clones of a guy each capable of, throwing around Jupiter like it was a beach ball in a single strike. Everyone else acknowledges that there's no way in they can stand up against him. Naming him the Supreme God, could probably think of a few more but that's three of the top of my head. Edit, chill everyone, I didn't say these were the top three most overpowered G's. There's no need to spam replies saying how your character eggs could win against them. Yeah, I feel like there are way too many characters from comics and anime that are just one and off. Appearances who are literally gods of some kind, for this question to be viable. Like, I could just pull out Superman probably Prime 1 million and be done with it. I feel like most characters with a form that adds a number or adjective to their name should be excluded from this types of questions. Bald boy from One Punch Man. Moomin Rider isn't bald. Justice Crash, Bill Murray's character in Groundhog Day, it doesn't matter what you throw at him, all it does is reset him, those powerful enough to destroy his mind would first have to know about his condition, and he can spend an infinite amount of days doing trial and error to figure out how to defeat you, this is a very good choice on opponents, yes he's the Batman with infinite prep time of the Bill Murray cinematic universe, Sun Wukong the Monkey King, from Journey to the West, I'm surprised this was so low, Wukong is the original self-insert up character. There was a part in DBZ where Goku fought the bad guy while he was dead. Even if you kill Goku, you just have to keep fighting him lol. Goku has the power of bad writing on his side. Toriyama forgets 90% of his own canon and just gives Goku a new tier of power to accomplish, which granted is basically how most shonen stories are, still waiting for Super Saiyan Blue Super Saiyan Ultra Instinct Incandescent. Bill Cipher came here to upvote whoever said this. Jorno's gold experience Requiem, it can return everything to zero, no attack can harm him. Also said anyone on Deathloop, there was a song a long time ago that pitched everyone against each other, I believe Mr. Roger won. Giorno and his broken spoken stand, menacing piano noises, in the Marvel Universe, the one above all, the Celestials living tribunal any of them can essentially destroy the entire universe, and GT, the one above all, or all of Stan Lee's cameos in the MCU actually him playing the one above all, canonically, that is, Mary Sue, nope, in terms of the original character Mary Sue, she couldn't overcome death, weak, Boruto's dad, Boruto's dad is really cool, I hope they make anime about him someday, Contessa from Worm, the ability to see the path to victory means she can never fail at anything. Saitama, Ross from Friends. Ross's career was the butt of a lot of jokes, but he got a PhD from Columbia in record time, skipped postdoc, became a museum curator, got fired for screaming at his boss, then still managed to become an assistant professor at NYU. To anyone in grad school, this is an unrealistically amazing career path. I mean, the shithead ate some and threw most of his really good sound Sandwich in the trash. That guy from Dragon Ball who killed a guy with his tongue. Oh, I found it. Bet his girlfriend loves him. Squirrel Girl. Just take a look at some of which include Thanos Thrive, Doom, Wolverine, Deadpool, and more. Her power is just to win. Steve from Minecraft. Is this based on his capacity for carrying gold blocks? Minecraft gold blocks are 1 cubic meter cubes of gold. Each one would weigh 19, 3 tons. Steve can carry 2,304 of them. Unless he uses shulker boxes, then the total is more like 62,208. A total of 1, 2 million tons. Anyone wanna check my sums? Don't forget wearing gold armor and then carrying another box in his offhand slot. 
Kirby, of course. Caillou, if I did have the he does, I'd be dead already. Tom or Jerry, Doctor, Manhattan, Beyonder, one above all. Franklin Richards, Legion, Scarlet Witch, Phoenix. The SCP Foundation played around with that concept. They decided to explore what the most conceptually powerful being could possibly be and came up with a being that can ascend beyond narratives. Jumping from his perspective as a character in a fictional narrative to climbing beyond our narrative, they describe narratives like if you wrote a comic book. Everything in that comic book is your narrative, the characters, the world, the rules. If you drew a writer penning a novel in that comic book, you control him. But the but the narrative of that book would also be his narrative, with a world and characters and rules. He would control the narrative of the book he was writing. It all spirals in on itself in layers and layers. This SCP is a man who was given the ability to ascend beyond the narrative of just being a character in someone's story, to climbing higher than our own narrative, the ultimate expression of power. He climbs higher than being a character in an online paranormal wiki. He climbs higher than our narrative to reach a position we would assume God to be. And he could climb higher, for if God is a narrative, something must be higher than God. This is a being that can't be beaten, because he can ascend higher than any narrative that could enforce the concept of loss, of pain, of victory against him. It shows the man's thoughts and development and how he tries to make sense of what he is. The author, Jar Jar Banks. Darth Jar Jar to those who are in the know, yes yes, indeed, Shaggy of Doom he will zoinks the out them all.